I said to them, Pastors, how many sermons are you preaching about what your people are actually going through? And what are you giving them that makes them strong in their culture? That's why, as I said before, I was dancing when Kathy was up here announcing the nine lies that the culture are telling you and the scriptural answer. That's what every church should be doing right now. It's what every, every church in America... What is the initial reaction going to be to lukewarm Christians when they read the headline of, that was against your pastor in the San Francisco Buzz? I mean the Sacramento Bee. What is their initial reaction? Oh my God, we Christians, we look bad. Well, by being silent, you look stupid. You really do. You look stupid. Now, When you keep your church closed, you're sending a signal that you don't care about your people. That's the most controversial thing I can say. You may think that you're couching it in, oh, well, I wanna do what's right for the health department. I wanna look good in the eyes. But your people read it. I needed church. I needed to be in church. I needed to sit with other like minds. I'm getting assaulted by something far worse than a pandemic. And that's the epidemic of wokeness that is coming like a toxic cloud over everything. I needed church. I needed worship. I needed to feel the presence of God with fellow believers. Now, Esther finds out that Mordecai is running through town screaming. Finally, he puts on sackcloth and ashes and begins sobbing out loud. Think of the modern preachers that would have looked at Mordecai and called him a radical, an alarmist, an extremist, and say, your, your statement about what's going on in America isn't true. Mordecai would have heard the same thing, a conspiracy to kill all of us? Are you crazy? But he was right. The, the news gets back to Esther. Two things she finds out. Number one, about the genocide. Number two, that the man she really loves, Mordecai, is wearing sackcloth and wailing in the center of town. So she's so distressed that she sent garments to Mordecai. That's what's going on right now. She sent him glad rags. Put the glad rags on. Wear the clothes you wore before the pandemic. Wear the theology, the values. We just want everything to get back to normal. Let's, I want it like it was before. I want la, 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 la. I just want it to go back to the way it was before. So that's when Mordecai comes back to her. And she explains why she can't take action. Don't you understand what the law says? The law says I can't go to the king and tell him about the genocide of our people because I will be executed. I might lose my life. Well, Esther, if they're going to exterminate all the Jews and you're Jewish, <laughs> and that's the logic that is keeping men of God quiet right now. Now here's the part. It says Mordecai leaves no doubt about her need to test the law. The Sacramento Bee said about the pastor's preaching, he's testing the law. Mordecai was telling Esther, you gotta test that law. There's a law you have to test. You have to test the law that puts a drag queen to read to your children on Saturday in a library. You have to test the law that will put a grown man in your little girl's bathroom. You have to test the law. You have to test the law. You have to be the voice at the city council, at the school board meeting. You have to be the individual that says, I 
oppose this. Now, my church has stayed close because it's the safe move. I'm not speaking out because it's the safe move. I, as a personal Christian, don't want to rock the boat. That's the safe move. Here's what Mordecai said to Esther, who was speaking of self-preservation. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace. FDR said to the moguls, don't think that you can look at me and say, oh, I'm going to keep building cars. I'm Ford. I'm going to keep making plastic and nylon. I'm DuPont. I'm going to keep delivering the mail. I'm Boeing. The president said, none of that will be here if we do not confront this threat. It's not going to be here. So finally, Mordecai said, you're not going to be safe in the palace if this edict goes forward. What can the righteous do? Oh, I have such good news for you. What can the right... How many of you are ready to have some fun? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Are you, how many of you are ready to have some fun right now? I'm going to close my notes because it gives you the false idea that I'm done. Can't possibly say more. He's got no notes. No, I do want to finish, but I, I've got to say this. How many of you want to have fun? Raise your hand, do you? Wokeness is going to be defeated in California. It is. It's going to be defeated. I'm going to tell you, it is going to be defeated. is going to happen in these closing moments is this. I want you to sign up right now to be a part of God's invading army of love. You know, the Jehovah's Witnesses kind of led us to believe that going door to door was a bad thing. They ruined it. So we've been down in the Elk Grove area going door to door. Yeah, we have been all summer. Frank and his team have been there all summer. They've given away boxes of groceries to the poor in Elk Grove area that would fill five semi-trucks. Somebody clap for the Lord. Yes, they have. And you know what's happening? And am I preaching the truth here, Frank? Instead of resistance, they're opening the doors. Thousands of them. They're in tears that someone is praying for their family. They're getting saved. One lady, her name is Pat. A little lady in the inner city who lost her sight can only see shadows. One of our workers who flew in to volunteer on the streets laid hands on Pat and her eyesight was restored. And our workers lost them. Now, in fact, I no longer call the righteous in America a remnant. I don't use the term remnant. There are too many of us to be a remnant. And there is going to come that moment when signs, wonders, and miracles are going to break out everywhere. And we're going to watch it in the name of Jesus. Somebody clap and give Christ the glory. Everybody stand to your feet. Give Christ all the glory. Give him praise. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God. Destiny Church is a model for thousands of other churches across America. The Bible tells us that when Paul was in jail... He said, he wrote to the Philippians in the first chapter in the 11th, 12th verse, and he says to them, I want you to know that my imprisonment has had the opposite of its intended consequence. Its intended result has backfired. 
He said, and my brethren, seeing my chain, have become more bold to preach. And the witness of the gospel has actually gone forward. So this crowd today is a testimony to what happens when the media attacks the church. It becomes stronger. It becomes more joyous. It becomes more prosperous. It becomes more influential. We are starting to win this war.